Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's small business webinar. My name is Paul LaChapelle. I'm with Montana State University Extension, and it's a pleasure to welcome you to this month's uh, webinar where we'll be talking about um, search engine optimization. Um, I'd like to remind you that we are um, recording today's webinar and we'll be posting that archive link on our website. So feel free to spread that, um, uh, that information around to your colleagues and that website address is in the Q&A box you can see in your lower left uh, corner of your screen. Um, today's webinar is sponsored by the Small Business Development Centers which are affiliated with the Montana Department of Commerce and the U.S. Uh, Small Business Administration. The Montana Economic Developers Association, MSU Extension, Community Development, with additional support from the Great Falls Development Authority and the University of Montana. If you have any technical support or questions uh, or, or needs, um, you can um, call the, uh, the number that's on the, uh, in the Q&A box or email me at the address that's there as well. Um, you will have an opportunity to ask questions uh, or comments. Uh, you can type them into that Q&A box. Uh, and you can do that any time during the presentation. Our presenter is happy to answer those questions as they come up. So um, uh, we'll both be monitoring those questions and uh, happy to address those um, as you submit them. And now I'd like to introduce today's presenter. Uh, Rich Gannon is um, the Rural Business Advisor, um, the SBDC Rural Business Advisor with the Great Falls Development Authority. and. Uh, his presentation title is A Beginner's Guide to SEO, Five Things You Can Do to Get Found Online. So with that, uh, Rich, thank you so much for joining us this morning, and uh, take it away. Right. Thanks, Paul. Can you hear me all right? My uh, sound level all right? Great. And you can see my smiling face, I hope, yep. too. All right. So thanks, everybody, for joining in. Uh, as Paul said, I'm a rural business advisor with Small Business Development Center and Great Falls Development Authority. Coming to you live today from uh, the greater metropolitan area of Cutbank. So how about everybody give me a quick chat and tell me where you're dialing in from, just to get an idea of where people are tuning in from. Um, you know, Great Falls, Bozeman, all right. So well, Paul's in Bozeman, Great Falls. So yeah, so it's good to see people around the state and um, Browning, Ronan, all right. Some people across the side of the mountains. Uh, so I primarily work with businesses north of the Great Falls area, although I do have some Great Falls clients. And today I'm going to give a um, brief intro to SEO, search engine optimization, a little bit about myself. Um, previously, before coming to work with Great Falls Development Authority, I did freelance website design and search engine marketing. I had clients from around the corner in Cutbank from Florida all the way to Alaska and, and places in between. I have a business marketing degree from the University of Montana, so go Grizz. And let's see how many Bozeman people give me the middle finger emoji for that one, but I don't see anything yet. Uh, just a quick reminder too, so this is gonna be a basic guide to SEO. This is going to be you know, some of the starter stuff. So if you're needing some more technical help, we can talk about that later, but this again is for kind of the beginner's guide to SEO. And with that, we're going to talk about the two major components of search engine optimization. The first one is on-page work. So this is anything, just like it describes, this is any work that you do to your website on the pages of your website. And these are things that you can directly control from uh, the type of text you put on your website to the more technical things on how your website is built. So that's an on-page activity. The other big part of SEO is off page and that's just as simple as it sounds any work you do off of your website and sometimes these are things you have direct control over sometimes they're not so as i go through this presentation i'm going to keep referencing whether or not we're working on either an on-page activity or an off-page activity so the first thing we're going to do in is an off-page activity and this doesn't really um a direct link to your website this is more of an online reputation management issue, although it can affect your search engine rankings and your website rankings, and that is to claim your business on a Google My Business profile. So there's, if you don't already have a business, a Google My Business account set up for your business, there's the address how to do it. I put a little uh, picture in of a, of a um, what a Google My Business profile looks like on a search, and this statistic here is why this is really important. And so, you know, the joke is out there, I found this 
statistic on the internet, so it has to be true, but 40% of users will conduct a search on Google and then they won't do anything because Google will answer their search query on the first page of the search, re search engine result page. And I find myself doing this all the time with Google My Business accounts, excuse me, with Google My Business listings. So uh, our local brewery, Cut Bank Creek Brewery, they don't have standard business hours and I'm constantly forgetting whether or not they're open. So I'll Google Cut Bank Creek Brewery and I'll see, oh, no, they're currently closed because it's 11 o'clock on a Thursday and it's too early for a beer. And then I won't do anything, I'll just leave. But Google answered my question and that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna use that business. More than likely, I'm going to actually engage with that business, but they answered my question. So having a Google My Business profile is really important for your overall online reputation and it, it does affect your website SEO results. Step two is, it maybe could have been step 1.2, but it's, I, I called it step two, is stay engaged with your Google My Business profile. And I'm gonna read this. You know, you're not supposed to read slides, but I think this is important. To maximize how often your customers see your business and local search results, complete the following tasks. And that's a direct quote from Mr. or Mrs. Google. So, uh, and they give you the information here, what they want you to do. Enter complete data, make sure you've filled out all the information you can on the Google My Business profile. Um, so customers know more about you, what you do, and when they can visit. There's gonna be a lot of information and just fill out as much as you can, give as many details about your business as possible there. Verify your locations. And when you set up your profile, you will be given the option to either verify through a video chat or with just an old fashioned postcard with a verification code. Um, keep your hours accurate. And this is really important. Google will actually send you updates and say, hey, President's Day is coming up. Are your hours current? And it's important that you always keep your hours updated in, and current in that information there. Um, manage and respond to reviews. It's also, it's okay to ask for reviews, but you just can't take, send out bulk solicitations. And I put a link in here to Google's review policy. So Google says it, it's okay to ask your customers for reviews, add photos. Um, really, there's no, there's no way to pay for a higher ranking in the Google My Business listing, but these steps show engagement. And why engagement is important is because Google over time will start to rank you higher in these results if you show engagement. And let's just go back real quick here to this example of the Cut Bank Creek Brewery. Um, just say, for example, it's Friday at three o'clock and I Google and say, yes, they're open. I'm going to go have a beer. Um, don't tell my boss it's three o'clock on a Friday. But uh, if I go there and they're actually closed and their Google My Business listing was wrong, that's going to have two effects. Number one, I'm going to be kind of upset with the business itself, but I'm also going to be disappointed that Google gave me a wrong result and I may not want to use Google again. So by staying engaged, you're signaling to Google that your business is open, it's hip to the hop, and they're going to be more likely to serve you up to their customers because they want their customers to have a positive interaction with a business. And that's gonna keep people coming back to Google to use it more. So again, Google My Business profile, that's an off-page activity and it will influence rankings on your website. Step three is going to be, we're going to actually be prepping for an on-page activity, and this is to do basic keyword research. So find out what customers are using to, might be using to find your website. And there's two free tools. One of them you may use all, uh, excuse me, all the time, and that's Google Autocomplete. Um, and this is Google Autocomplete, kind of like that annoying friend who was always trying to finish your sentence. Um, the other one is a great website called Small SEO Tools, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Let's talk about Google Autocomplete right now. I call this the lazy man's keyword planner. And from this point on in the presentation, I've made a fake company. So let's just say that uh, this person owns a rental cabin in East Glacier, and they're going to try, they're going to build a website, and they're going to try to optimize their website to get tourists to stay in their cabin in East Glacier. Again, this is just a made up scenario. So Google autocomplete, this person would put an obvious keyword like East Glacier cabin into Google, 
and Google gives it a bunch of semantically related keywords that uh, this person could, could start building some keywords based on these suggestions. So they put East Glacier Cabin into Google search and um, Google recommends, oh, East Glacier Camping Cabins, that may have been a keyword this business owner hadn't thought of before. So Google Autocomplete is a really easy, you know, it's a quick free tool to use to do keyword research. The other one, Small SEO Tools, works very similar to Google Autocomplete. It just gives you a longer list. Um, it will produce between 15 to 20 results, and it's also easier to copy and paste that list out of the Small SEO Tools. And so if you're building a spreadsheet or a Word, uh, a Word document of your keywords, you can use this Small SEO Tools keyword research tool to you put in a seed word, it's going to populate a list and it's easy to copy and paste that for future reference. So it's very similar to Google Autocomplete, but a few more, um, few more little bells and whistles to it. And again, that's a free tool. I'm going to keep referring to this small SEO tools website because they've got a gr uh, great bunch of SEO uh, online tools you can use. Another way to get keyword research is to spy on your competition and Small SEO Tools has a tool for that. It's called a keyword position tool. So what you can do is you can go grab a competitor's website, their domain, you pop it into this tool, and then it will come up with a list of the keywords that, that the top ranking keywords that that particular website ranks for. So uh, in our East Glacier example, we um, found BearCreekGuestRanch.com. That is an actual business in East Glacier that rents cabins. And we want to say, well, what what keywords are they ranking for? And using this tool, it will tell us. And you can see here that this competitor website ranks really highly for things like horseback riding, cattle drives. They also rank fairly high for the keyword of riding a bear. So <laughs> whatever that means. But um, it, this may or may not help because, you know, maybe we don't uh, do a lot of cattle drives at our our cabin, but it's going to give you some idea of what your competition is ranking for. So this is a really helpful tool to just see, the, again, the keywords that your competitions are ranking for, and then you can kind of start to develop your list from that as well. So after you develop your core group of keywords using those two methods, we're going to do, we're going to develop, take it one step further and develop what are called long tail keywords. And uh, long tail keywords, that's just a real nerdy way of talking about keyword phrases that are used by motivated searchers or shoppers. So just compare the search phrases of Glacier Park Rental versus East Glacier Cabin Rental July 2020. And just ask yourself, between those two terms, which term is more likely to result in a buying action by the searcher? Well, I'd argue it's the second search term because it's specific. They have a location in mind, they have a product in mind, and they have a date in mind. And East Glacier Park Rental, well, that's a good search term to rank for, but that person who searches East Glacier Park Rental may not be looking to rent a cabin. They might be looking to rent a boat or a kayak or a car, and they may be looking at a different geographic location. So with your main list of keywords, you start to develop these long tail keywords that are highly specific and have a, a motivation or an action attached to them. I like long tail keywords so much I built a graph. Actually, I didn't build a graph. This was uh, on the internet, but um, I customized it. And so on the vertical axis, we have search volume and just think of this as competition. On the horizontal axis, we have conversion rate and just think of this as the probability that someone who is using a search phrase will turn into your customer. So you start out with a search term like Glacier Park. Well, that's a pretty broad search term and someone who searches the term Glacier Park may just want information on how fast the glaciers are melting or they may wanna know when the Going to the Sun Highway opens. You slide down that a little bit more and you add the modifier Glacier Park Rentals You've eliminated some of those other searchers who are not looking to rent something, but you're still not down in that sweet spot because there again, they could be searching for kayak rentals or car rentals or a different, a different location to park. 
you slide down that graph a little bit farther and you get into the actual long tail keyword like East Glacier Park Cabin Rental July 2020, you've eliminated a whole bunch of competition for words that you weren't even really, didn't even care to compete for. There's all this noise you've eliminated and you've dramatically increased the probability that someone is searching for your product. So that's just the long tail search effect in graph form. So now that you've got your core group of keywords and you have developed your um, long tail keywords, now it's time to actually put content onto your site. And this is an actual on-page activity. So content on your site, after you've built your home page, your about us page, your services page, all the things that make a website a website, the best way to create content on your website using keywords is to use a blog. And blogging really does help. So some tips about blogging, you wanna make your blogs useful and helpful content, and you wanna write for a human. A few years ago, I had an SEO client who was um, had a plumbing business in Portland, and he had got the message that you're supposed to use keywords on your website. So he would write blog posts like, um, are you, are you in Portland and need a Portland plumber? I'm a Portland plumber in Portland who plums for people in Portland who needs a Portland plumber because I'm a plumber in Portland. So his blog post, he got the idea, but he was stuffing a bunch of keywords into there and it wasn't written for a human. And actually nowadays, that type of activity will get you, um, your, it will negatively affect your rankings on Google because they realize you're just, you're just trying to game the system. So when you create your blog posts, make them useful and write for a human. And really a good tip on that is to, to create a blog post, read it out loud to someone or have someone else read it out loud to you. If it makes sense, it's good. If it doesn't make sense, then you've got to go back and write it again. Um, also here, don't just make sales content. Google loves it when you become a resource for the users. And what I mean by that is, going back to this East Glacier Cabin rental company, they don't need to always have 100 posts about how wonderful their cabin is. They could become an expert on all things East Glacier Park. You know, they could have blog posts on the five best hikes in East Glacier or the best place to get a burger after a hike. So they're not just focusing on sales content, they're becoming a resource. And eventually after you can become a resource, you will get some followers and you'll get some traction on your SEO. The next thing I'd like to tell people is uh, post often or don't blog. Um, I see this all the time. People say they're gonna start a blog, they're gonna work on SEO, they're gung-ho, they create a blog and they do two posts and then they walk away. So if you're gonna blog, create a year's worth of posts in advance. That might seem like a lot, but just think about it. If you're gonna do one post a month, that's 12 posts. You don't release it over time, or you don't release it all at once. Release it over time, have a slow burn on it, but get your stuff done, because otherwise you'll get busy, you won't get back to it. So post often or don't blog. How many people out there, you, you go to a website and the latest blog they have is from three years ago? Don't do that. So if you're gonna do it, make sure you're consistent with it. So the next thing we're talking about is link building. And this is really important. This is can be both an on-page and off-page activity. So links to, from, and around your site are important. Links from your site to other websites are helpful. And here's another thing, don't forget about internal linking. Internal linking something is really easy to do and it's often overlooked. And that is just linking within the text of your website on your blog posts, linking around to other pages on your website. It's a great way for Google to help Google discover other pages of your website. And it's a great way for, to allow readers to discover other pages on your website. So getting back to our East Glacier example, something like this might be, they may have a blog post about um, the five best hikes in East Glacier um, and at the end of it, they might say, if you're looking to have a beer after some hikes, check out our ratings of the five best bars in East Glacier. And there's a link over to their ratings of the five best bars in East Glacier. So that does two things. 
when Google's out there crawling your website and indexing that page, it sees that link and then it, it hops over to that other page and indexes that page. But it, but it also helps the human reader discover more pages on your website. So internal links, something that's really easy to do and it's often overlooked. So uh, links to other sites are good, links around your site are good, but really backlinks to your site are the most important. And this is how Google became so dominant in search. Uh, the early days of the internet, search engines were having a hard time figuring out how to rank websites. And Google just came up with the idea of let's make it one big popularity contest. It's really a pretty simple concept and it's actually based on the academic paper model. So academic papers, uh, if there's a bunch of scientists and professors who cite one person's academic paper, it raises the profile of that certain paper. Google does the same thing with websites. If you have a website that has no links to it, it's not going to rank as high as a website who has 150 links to it because the website who has a, that has 150 links, well, Google determines that must be a mo more important website. So backlinks to your website are probably the most, aside from content, are probably the most important thing with SEO. How do you get backlinks? Well, here's an easy way. Anytime you post a new blog post, head over to your social media accounts, including your Google My Business profile, and post a link back to your website. That's gonna help people discover your website. It's gonna start driving some traffic to your website, and that's easy to do. Another thing you can do is ask other website owners to just trade the links, and that's called reciprocal linking. And this just is actual personal relationship building. So again, our East Glacier example, they, this person goes and talks to restaurant owners and say, hey, I'm building a links page. I'd like to include a link to your restaurant. Could you put a link on your website back to my website? So getting other websites to link to you just by building relationships with other website owners. And then the hardest thing to do is, and it goes back to step number four, is to create such awesome share-worthy content that other people will just start to naturally source to you and link to you. So, you know, the holy grail out there is if you become, you create such great content that just random people are linking to your website because you've got such great information. So um, that goes directly back to step number four and how you create that content. And bonus step six, today you get uh, five steps for the, or excuse me, six steps for the price of five. Monitor your progress. Again, one of my favorite websites, Small SEO Tools, has a keyword position tool. And so what you can do is you can enter your domain name in there. You can type in some keywords that you want to rank for. And you push go, and it will come back, and it will tell you what position your website is on Google for those certain keywords provided you're within the top 100 results. And I would argue probably that if you're not in the top 100 results, it doesn't matter if you're in position 102 or, or 115. Um, really, you need to be probably in the top 10 results to get some good results with SEO. Monitor your progress, you know, uh, look at it when you begin, check it three months later and see if any of these, these keywords are moving the ranking of your website up. Um, if you do this, if you're consistent with your keywords on your blog posts, if you're consistent with posting your blog posts on your social media, and you will start to see some traction with your SEO. It will depend on how competitive your market is. So, you know, if you're an accountant in Conrad and you're trying to compete for Conrad accountant keywords, Pretty good, pretty good uh, probability over time you're gonna start ranking for that word. But let's say you're a graphic designer in Missoula and you're competing for graphic design keywords nationwide because you can do graphic design freelance. That's gonna be a really competitive, a really difficult keyword to rank for. So it's gonna depend on how competitive your industry and your niche is. But if you keep up with these steps of creating content sharing your website as much as possible, you will start to rank over time. So quick review, 
set up your Google My Business profile and stay engaged with it. Don't just set it up and walk away. Stay engaged with it. Keep your hours up to date. Um, post pictures and ask for reviews. Step three, do basic keyword research. Remember, you know, you can uh, use the Google Auto Complete just as a real simple way to do keyword research. You can also spy on your competitors with that, that tool I noted. Um, build that content into your website using a blog and do it often. Um, build backlinks to your website as much as you can. Get out there, post, uh, post your website on, on as many sites as you can. Try to get links to and from your site and monitor your progress. Just uh, take a look at things. Check every couple months, see how it's going, see if you need to change stuff up. Um, so anybody, I am happy to help out. I can do an SEO audit. Uh, all my counseling services are free of charge. I can help you do some keyword research. I can even help you come up with blog topic ideas. Great. So I see we've got a, a question there. Yep. Go ahead and read it out loud if you want to, Rich. Yeah, so Jason asks, how, how long should someone expect this type of effort to show results? A few weeks, a few months? I think it's going to depend a little bit on how much content you add, but I, it, it's a slow burn. It takes it takes a few months to really start to get your site indexed and noticed. Um, and it's also going to depend on um, the type of backlinks you're actually getting. So, you know, if you're um, new to this game and, and then the New York Times travel section writes an article about how the best cabin in Montana is this little cabin in East Glacier and they include a link back to your website in the first week you've launched. Well, that's going to solve all your SEO problems. But if you're not getting that type of traction, it's kind of a slow burn. So I would, I would give it a couple of months. Don't expect miracles right away. Thanks. Any other questions out there? We've got time for a few, um, a few questions. If you'd like to type those into the Q and a box and, um, while folks are doing that, uh, I'll just remind um, you all that you can download the presentation um, uh, at the, in the file download box there. Just click on the, uh, the PDF and, and click the download file button. Um, we'll give folks just another minute to ask any questions. Um, well, Thanks, that, Rich, maybe I'll ask you, um, can you talk a little bit about yeah. Google Analytics and how that, um, how that could be used to kind of uh, optimize um, 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 searches and um, uh, SEO, uh, some of the things that you've talked about? Yeah, so Google Analytics is going to be a tracking code you're going to add to your website, and that's going to give you some data on who's visiting your website and how they're getting there. So that can help inform you know, some of your targeting and maybe help inform some of your keywords on, on who's visiting your site and how they're getting there. Also, I didn't mention this either you know, because I didn't want to get too technical, but um, there's a, a platform called Google Search Console, and you can create a Google Search Console account, and that will also give you some more data on keywords people are using to, re to get to your site. So those are two, two tools you can add to your website to uh, track visitor location and how they're how they're getting to your site. Great. We've got a few more comments coming in, some accolades. Um, Jason's also asking survey requests um, or, or, or just commenting, uh, survey requests just went out to everyone. Please respond to help us customize our training events in the future. Um, and also Charlie's asking, will the recording of this webinar be made available? Yes, it will, Charlie. Um, you can go to the link that I posted at the top of this Q&A box um, and just click on that, that website and we've posted all the archives. Give us about a day, and we'll we'll post this uh, this recording as well. So, yep, and, and really feel free anybody to give me a call, even if you're not really in my uh, SPDC area. I'm happy to give you a hand, point you in the right direction. Um, and I, again, this was real basic, so there's a lot more technical stuff I didn't I didn't cover. If anybody wants some more information on some more of the technical stuff on, um you know how the website is actually built, I can go over that as well too. And maybe as we conclude. Um... Rich, can you talk about what an SEO audit is and how long it takes and what that involves? So really what I do with an SEO audit is I ask um, someone to give me their top five or ten keywords they'd like to rank for. I'll use some of those free tools to see how they actually are ranking for that site. 
I'll take an actual a look at their site and see if they're actually using those keywords on their website. Um, I will do some technical checks on their website to see how the website is built because there are a few technical components to make sure your title tags are done the right way, to make sure your um, text is actually formatted the right way with the, the proper um, H tags and things like that. Um, I'll also ask through your competitor website, see how they're ranking, and we'll just take a look at your website and see what improvements could be made. And that usually takes me, depending on how uh, competitive the website and how deeply I need to do, between two and four hours to kind of do a, a quick SEO website for some uh, audit for someone. Wonderful, great. Um, and uh, somebody's just posting that you helped uh, with an audit, and um, they say it was invaluable. So um, and. Uh, that's good to hear. Thanks, Deborah. Great that you uh, offer that service free of charge, um, and um, just some more some more uh, accolades there uh, being typed in. So, um, well, why don't we wrap this up? If there's no other questions, um, we'll give folks just another moment to um, to ask a question if they do have them. I'll remind um, everybody that I will be sending um, the archive. Um, link information on our listserv. If you would like to join the listserv, get notices about um, upcoming webinars and other information. Um, all that information is, is available at the website that we've posted again at the top of the Q&A box. Uh, so feel free to, um, uh, to join the listserv and to spread the word about our webinar series. Our next webinar will be March 5th, um, again the first Thursday of each month, and um, we'll be announcing that uh, topic and speaker. Um, uh, soon. So if there is no other questions, I don't see any. Uh, Rich, any parting words from you? Uh, no, thanks everybody for tuning in and i um, happy to help any way I can. Just, you know, shoot me a text or call or email. Right great. Those Rich, numbers. great information. Really appreciate your time and the valuable um, uh, presentation that you've shared with us. For all of you that joined us today, thank you and we'll see you uh, at next month's small business webinar. Till then, Take care. Thank you.